Well, hey, everybody, Dr. Angela Loria here, the author incubator, and I am super excited with what I have to share with you today. You may have heard the story of my amazing pro speaker coach, Majid Magaraban. Majid, say hello. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to share this with you because I've had such an amazing experience this week, really up leveling my speaking skills and learning from the best. So you guys may not know this, but I live in the Washington DC area and just up the road is a little company called Learning Tree International and they have some of the world's best speakers and their number, he won't tell you this, but their number one rated speaker for many years was Majid and he used to come and speak to uh, his audiences here and then we would get to have dinner. And in all that time, I always thought, and I told him this, by the way, um, God, I wish I could have somebody with your experience actually speaking on stages, like generating revenue, impacting some lives, like teaching me how to do this because I am making all this shit up. And I finally feel after 11 months of working with Majid, finally twisted his arm after about a year. Um, but I finally feel like now I know what I'm doing. I know all those secrets of the professional speakers that I never got to learn because I just jumped into speaking without really being prepared. So I asked Majid if he would take our coaching time today and dedicate it to you guys and sort of share some of the speak secrets that professional speakers know about how to make money speaking um, and really just a bunch of stuff that we can kind of cram into the next hour. So I'm super excited you're here. I'm going to be interjecting and going back to that time a year ago, two years ago, with some of the questions I had to make sure that you are getting a ton of value. And um, then we've got some fun stuff to share if you stay all the way to the end, which I hope you will. Um, but Majid, I want to turn it over to you because this is really like our our gift to people so that they understand more about what you do, why I was so excited to work with you, um, and why I'm so glad you're helping other people now with your speaking magic. Well, thank you so much, Angela. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Majid Like Magic, which I always do at the beginning of my speech to help be memorable. And um, I want to thank you, Angela, for really being the spark that made me realize that this is a gift that I can actually help people with and not just be a great speaker, but actually help other people, not just become great speakers, but make money speaking so that they can sustain an actual business and grow their business and not just have it as a side hustle hobby thing. So I've put together a training for people who think maybe I need to get on stages to get my message out there, or I wonder how like the professional speaking circuit really works and how do people actually make money. And I want to let you into a world that was unknown to me as a professional speaker for many, many years, which is that you can make lots more money the new way the best top speakers are making money now. And it's a That's what I'm doing, right? That is what you're doing now. Okay, good. I got it you're right. You're doing very well. And you're one of my case studies in here. Awesome. Oh, really? You may have not seen that. I sent the I didn't see it, but I like to be the A student. So like whenever I hire a coach, I don't know if you have this goal too. Um, but whenever I hire a coach, my secret goal is to be in their case study deck. I'm like, I just want to be the best. So I make it to the case study deck. That's I'm a great, great thing. You're totally at the top of the case study deck. Absolutely. You're an A student as well. Ooh, all right. So, let's get into it. For those of you who are A students, sharpen your pencil, get ready to take notes, and hold your right hand up just like this. This is a fun one, Angela. Make a fist and pull it down to your opposite uh, your opposite waist because it's time to buckle up. Buckle up because we're going, let's do this thing. Okay, and by the way, Angela and I, we worked on all these different audience engagement things because Angela is super smart and she's given all this information, but we had to find a way, how do we make that information more receivable, more entertaining, more bite-sized? So that's what we ended up working on quite a bit. I'm gonna jump into this training that I have prepared called How to Make Money Speaking. Let's do this thing. I'm gonna click the share screen button. Boom, say yes if you can see Make Money Speaking. I see your thumbs up there, Angela, cool. And you muted yourself like a good A student, thank you. All right, check this out. If you got a message, 
If you have the desire to get on stages, you've got to do it in a way that is profitable. Otherwise, it's an expensive hobby and not a real business. So let's figure out how you're going to do that. First of all, think to, think to yourself, how do people make money speaking? And you may have heard the term professional speaker, paid speaker, keynote speaker. You may have heard big numbers like, oh, I made up $10,000 in 60 minutes. And by the way, it took 20 years to get to that 60 minutes. That is actually the old way of making money speaking. And I just got off the phone with our mutual friend, Giovanni Angela, who confirmed this theory of mine, which I'm gonna share with you in a moment. A man who has spayed, pen, spent multiple six figures in the last few years on paid speakers. This is the guy I was just talking to. So what kind of speaking do you want to be doing? Do you wanna do, so there's sort of a spectrum. You can do the big audience keynote speech, and keynote means it's a short period of time, 90 minutes or less, or you can do half day workshops. That's a speaking engagement. You could do a full day or a multi-day seminar. You could do a retreat. So there's many different kinds of speaking. So- I do all of the above, right? Totally. Okay. You did a 10 minutes to 3,000 people speech. Yeah, which generated, oh, I can tell you, I guess it generated about $60,000 in 10 minutes, which isn't bad. I mean, you know, every $60,000 helps. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, and as you know, it wasn't just 10 minutes. It was lots of practice. To, it's actually the, much harder to, to do a 10-minute speech oh my God. than a full-day speech, right? Especially the way I was trying to do it which was not cute. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so just think about how do you see yourself in front of audiences? What kind of audiences? Um, and beware that perhaps the big speech and the big stadium, it might be just your ego saying, this means I'm officially important, but it might not necessarily be the best way to have an impact. There's sort of three stages of impact. There's inspiration, education, and implementation. Inspiration is rah, rah, you can do it and people are on fire. Education is teach them how to get the goal, how to solve the problem. Implementation is seeing them through the relationship, seeing them through actually solving that problem, which comes out through sort of coaching. So if you imagine a spectrum, big audience, short period of time, that's inspiration. Small audience, longer period of time, implementation. So inspiration, education, and implementation. So what are you gonna learn today? One thing that's super important is you gotta tell stories. You gotta tell stories. Facts tell, stories sell. And sell not just in the fact that customers will buy when they hear a story, but they sell the idea. It makes it more memorable, it makes it more engaging. So you gotta know stories, and I'm gonna give you some frameworks that you can just fill in the blank and tell your story. I'm gonna show you the two different ways to make six figures as a speaker, the two ways I call the new way and the easy way. The new way and the easy way is, is uh, the way that I recommend to my clients, and the old way and the hard way is the way it used to work and the way you might be thinking you're supposed to go about becoming a paid speaker. I may be smashing your dreams today, but then also offering you something that's so much easier and so much more attainable. And I'm also gonna sh show you why your speech title is more important than your speech. So let's get into it. Why should you listen to me? Over 200 paid speaking engagements, nearly a million dollars generated from speaking engagements, uh, I've been a longtime member of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. I'm a Canadian, don't you know? I think we say that, Canadians, A, eh? don't you know? Um, I was That's a painful, just for the record. It's, it's painful when I say I'm a Canadian now, don't you know? Yeah, it's the don't you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I started as, as a, you know, I, I joined this Association of Professional Speakers. I just wanted to learn what everyone else was doing. Turns out almost everybody has no idea what they're doing anyway, but here's the unique thing about speaking businesses. They're all different. There's no one the same. It has more to do with what is your gift, what kind of speaking do you wanna do, who do you wanna serve, and you build the model around that, which is great because it allows you to do the work that you love and the way that you wanna do it, and so it's not just a rigid, this is the only way to be a paid speaker. So I was on the national board, I was on the local board and I just really was on a mission to just understand how do people actually make money speaking. So I've been officially a professional speaker for eight years as been, you know, as soon as you get paid, you're a professional speaker. And I'll tell you my first speaking engagement was at, was at the retirement home down the street here. 
the, the owner of the retirement home said, we, uh, the people aren't getting along. Can you come in with some sort of a message of peace and understanding? And so I packed a bunch of Ziploc bags with two sachets of tea, and, I gave, and so I used it as a prop. I gave one out to each person and I said, your mission is to have a cup of tea, one's for you and one's for your greatest enemy. Get to know them. And so we talked about peace and love and I got paid $25 Starbucks gift card. Officially a professional speaker at the old folks home. So we gotta start somewhere. So. Did you get invited back? I did not get invited back. Oh, hmm. I had no idea what happened to those friendly old people. Apparently your skills have improved since then because I know like getting invited back is one of the big secrets. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And in fact, one of the metrics of success is how many more speaking engagements are generated from that last speaking engagement. Love that. When you're getting three more engagements, every engagement, you don't need to market anymore because your product is so good. Awesome. But how do you get on that stage initially? That's what I'm also going to share with you today. So first, I want you to see how speaking can fit into an existing business. Instead of thinking about, I want to be a professional speaker and make all the money I ever need from paid speaking engagements, think about if you added speaking to your current business, the power it has to drive more sales and clients. Because when you speak, people get to know you and your story. Oftentimes in a physical room, they can even have a conversation with you and they hear from your story that, wow, you have solved the problem that they're dealing with right now and you know how to solve it likely for them. So it really helps the marketing and the sales side of your business. It rapidly builds the like, no trust factor. It positions you as an expert. Literally, if you say, I'm going to talk about this topic and stand in front of a room of people, it is perceived that you are an expert on that topic until proven otherwise. You have the undivided attention and admiration of your target audience. And when I say admiration, it's like the person who's on the dance floor. Everyone who's sitting, the person dancing thinks, yeah, maybe I'm making a fool of myself and you know, everyone else is sitting, maybe they're too cool to dance. But everybody's sitting, I promise you, they're thinking, man, I wish I had the courage to be dancing. That's what happens when the audience sees you in front of the room. They go, man, I wish I had the courage to share my story like that. So you get the attention and admiration of your target audience when you're speaking in front of a group of your target audience, your ideal client, the people who you want to serve. And your speech helps solve a problem. Every speech should have some sort of transformation, just like today's training. You're going to go from knowing a little bit about the speaking business to knowing a lot more in the next few minutes. So there's a transformation in every speech. And it's fun. It's fun to get on stage. It's fun to get flown out to a speaking engagement. It's fun to have a limousine pick you up at the airport with your name on it, put you in the presidential suite and be treated like a celebrity as the keynote speaker. That's all fun. Why do you want to speak? Well, I want to jump in here because I want to talk about the fun factor. Um, and when you talk about fun, like for me, I have a lot of social anxiety. So I don't mind being on the stage and speaking. But I really, like, I'm somebody who likes to throw a party more than to go to one. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that is so different for me, when I go to an event and I'm the speaker, I never have to figure out small talk. Like, everyone wants to talk to me. And they already, they've seen the name of my speech. So they're usually not talking to me about, you know, puppies and kittens. They're usually mm -hmm. talking to me about exactly the thing I care most about, which is what yeah. I'm speaking about. And it's so much more fun for me to go to an event when everyone there has seen my picture on the advertising, um, you know, like maybe they've seen a video of me beforehand and they're excited to see me. It's like, when you say fun, I think for a lot of people, it can bring up like anxiety, but there's so much less anxiety when I'm the speaker. I don't know if that's- Totally, good. totally, yeah. And I'll, I'll, give, I'll give the people watching two quick tips about how you work a room when you're a speaker. Before your speech, the, the topic of conversation can easily be, what would you like to know about the thing I'm about to talk to, talk about? And then when you're on stage, you and say, you get to mention them. I was talking to Sally just before the talk. And I Sally always said, feel like a politician when I do that. Cause you know, like Barack Obama or whatever, when he's giving a speech, he'll be like, when I was, you know, talking to this average citizen at a town hall in Kentucky. Like it always feels like so much more connected to your audience when you can That's tell exactly it. 
It's so good. That's exactly it. And often I'll go to a conference and I'll go the day before and I'll have some of these market research conversations and then I'll change my slides and I'll put in quotes from the guy I talked to and I'll point to him in the back of the room and people are just like, whoa, like he really, is he, is he a member of our organization? Has he been working here? He knows everybody here. He's yeah. so connected. Yeah. That's awesome. And then afterwards, the, the topic of conversation could be what stood out most for you in the talk? What really resonated for you? Right. So you yeah. just, what, what do you want to know about the talk? How'd the talk go for you? So you, you already know what to talk about. Yeah. And I feel like that's totally true because when I, make a speech now people will say or even if i'm doing like a three-day event or a one-day event like people will say to me like that was amazing you're awesome and i used to just say thank you and i'll be like what do you remember like what stands out for you what do you remember and i learn so much like it's usually a lot of times it's just like a story i told spontaneously like it's not even something i would have guessed and then i do more of that next time yeah exactly for years uh, training at Learning Tree, I would ask to take pictures of people's notes. And I would review other people's notes because that would indicate to me what was noteworthy. Yep. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Back to it. Here we go. So what's really holding you back? I've asked this question many times to people. Over the years, people have said, Majid, I want to get into the speaking business. Would you mentor me? And I, you know, I'll give them some tips and I'll sit them down for coffee. And, but what's really holding you back, nine times out of 10, the answer is I just don't know where to start. And I'm gonna give you where to start today. So no more excuses or what's holding you back. Now you might be thinking like I was for years, you need all the gadgets. I gotta get the right lights. I gotta get the special microphone. I gotta get the wireless clicker. I gotta get the flip chart and the markers and I gotta get a website and I need my tagline and once my business cards are done. And there used to be this thing called the one sheet. The one sheet, you go to, the trade show and you have your one sheet every speaker is like summarized in one page and in fact if you go to the library or the bookstore and grab a book on how to become a paid speaker they're gonna tell you to buy all these things and what I have found from experience is that you can buy all the lights cameras and markers and you still have no speaking engagements so it turns out this is not the thing that you need to worry about it's actually more of a distraction you might be thinking, I need an agent, I need a bureau, I need a salesperson because I'm great on stage, I'm great with my clients, I'm just not good at selling. The secret about agents and bureaus is that they only want people who don't need agents or bureaus. They want people who are getting tons of requests that they just can't even handle the request. They say, you know what, just talk to my bureau, they'll book it all, they'll handle it for me. They work with high volume people who are already there. They might take your bio and your picture and put it on their database to say they have representing one more speaker, but they are not actively selling you. Even someone on staff, even someone you hire as a salesperson is not gonna be able to develop the relationships that you need to develop with the people who can actually hire you. So I don't recommend starting there at all. Skip all that stuff, on to the next step. So the old way of speaking, the old way of making money as a speaker is to be the expert on the topic and sell a bite-sized version of your expertise that you're going to disseminate to the audience. And back in the 70s and 80s, people would, event organizers would ask themselves, who has the best information on this topic? We're gonna to pay them and fly them out to come speak to our group. The group is gonna to come to this hotel and they wanna get that best information, that latest, greatest research and go home and apply it to their business. Turns out today, we all have the latest, greatest information in our phones, on the internet. We don't need the latest, greatest information. What we need is storytelling. We need experience. And what the event planners need is actually quite different today than it was 30 years ago. Event planners could predict that they were gonna fill their events, that everyone would show up year after year. Now, there are more events than ever which is a good thing for you and me because we're speakers, it's a bad thing for event planners because event planners are now lying awake at night worrying, how am I gonna fill my event? And the answer has presented itself as the celebrity speaker. The celebrity speaker is someone you've heard of before, maybe it's an author you've heard of or maybe it's someone you saw on a reality television show. They may not even be a great speaker, but they fill the event because people justify buying the ticket and going because they go, I really want to see so-and-so because they're really cool. Celebrities. 
So if you happen to be a celebrity, the old model of selling yourself as a speaker actually still works because what you're selling them is not your speech. You're selling your brand that's going to drive people into the room. If you are not a celebrity, there is a new way, a better way, and I would suggest even skipping the whole world of paid speaking engagements. They're great, they're great for your ego, but they take about a year to sell, and if, you're, if, you're, if you started selling today to a paid speaking engagement, you're not speaking on a stage until late 2018, a year, a year, year out from now. So I wanna jump in on the celebrity thing too, because I think a lot of people watching this might know me and they've seen me. Um, I for sure do not qualify as a celebrity in case anybody is confused about that. And like my, my um, test for that is ideally we want like a million followers on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. Like that to me is what a celebrity is. It's like if you've got maybe 500,000 minimum followers, then you qualify. But if you don't have a million followers, you're not a celebrity. I've got you know, I don't know, 30,000 or something, I for sure don't qualify. And like you said, it's going to be a long time anyway. Um, and so I want to do something now. I want to impact people right now. Yeah. And that's why when we jumped in, we focused more on this new approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the conversation I was just having with Giovanni, who for the last two years has been get, booking celebrity speakers to get thousands of people to come to his audience. And it's working very well for him. He would not book a no-name expert, even if they had the best information, the best step-by-step -step system to solve the audience's problem, because it's not going to put butts in the seats. So what do, where does that leave us? And by the way, if you don't believe me, the fastest way to find this out is to call the conference organizer of 10 conferences you'd love to speak at and ask them if they'll hire you and see what they say. They will typically say, how many followers? How many subscribers? Are you going to help us promote the event? How many tickets can you sell? So you can do that. You can find that out pretty quickly. So here's the new way. First, I got to tell you a story. When I joined the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, I was given the advice, don't quit your day job because this is a hard business and it takes a long time to build. And the model that I was using was indeed quite hard and it did take quite a long time to build. And that was the model of get people to pay you to speak. And at the time, I didn't even know about this way I'm going to share with you to make money speaking. Um, but I had slowly worked my way working with, uh, as Angela mentioned, Learning Tree International to do a bunch of corporate training gigs and to do the occasional paid speaking engagement at a conference here, a conference there. And I had worked my income up past six figures and into the uh, group. There's this elite group where you have to make over $350,000 to get into the room. And there's 500 members in caps and I'm going counting how many of them are in this room and there was 15 of us 14 others seven years later I'm sitting in this room and I had the exact same question I had on day one of my speaking business how do you make money speaking how do you make money speaking next person next person next person and I was surprised to learn almost nobody makes a majority of their money from paid speaking engagements. This is when I started to learn like, oh, so how do you make your money? And they said, we use speaking to get clients. Really? So how does that work? And they tell me about how they gather an audience or they go to an event that has a bunch of audience members that could hire them and they have an actual business or a service that they provide and the speech becomes the marketing channel for them to become aware and hire them. So I said, how do you do that? Teach me. So I learned how to do this. And then I, at the same time, I looked back and at the same time I had coaching clients and I had uh, small business clients and I asked myself, how did they find me? And every single one of my clients to date has found me, including Angela, has found me from first speech. I gave a speech, in the case of Angela, I gave a two minute speech and got her attention. Yeah, it was two minutes and it was unpaid. It was unpaid. That worked out well for you. Yes, it did. It worked out very well. And so I like to think of that as a $50,000 paid speaking engagement. You know, I wasn't paid for the speech, but the speech created a $50,000 sale. It's great. I'm very happy with that. 
So I will tell you what really gets you booked. And I will tell you right now that I am supporting people on the path to paid speaking engagements and also helping them create multiple extra streams of revenue that's going to come from that speaking. But this is what really gets you booked with an event organizer. First of all, they're buying your speech. They're not buying, they're buying your title. They're not buying what you say on stage. They're not going to sit and watch an hour speech that you gave and say, okay, that's good. I want it on my stage. They're going to hear the title and go, ooh, that's what we need this year. So that title's got to sell. And I'll give you a quick title story. There was a guy giving networking training at um, this business incubator here in Ottawa, Canada. And fabulous guy, super smart, knows his stuff, great presenter. His speech title was, your network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth, which is cute. It rhymes, and I get it. And essentially, that's a title that gives you a fact, and you go, oh, okay, I understand. But it doesn't say who it's for. It doesn't say what you're going to get. And the purpose of the title is to get people to click and say, I want to read that description. And the description was very, you know, just very basic about all the things you have to do in your networking. That's fine. And so I saw his event was attended by 10, 11 people in a room that holds 40, so it kind of looked like an empty event. So I was asked to deliver a networking talk. This, this person ended up no longer giving these talks, and I was asked to give, kind of replace him. So I changed the title and changed the description. That's the only thing we changed. The new title was Networking For, and For is a powerful marketing word so that people can identify who is it actually for. Networking for people who hate networking. Networking for people who hate networking, then they're like, yep, that's me, sign me up. And then the description says, would you rather stab yourself in the eye with a pen than go to another networking event? Oh, hello, that's me, right? So now we, have, now we let the audience identify that's the speech that I can't miss. So different title, different description, the room is packed standing room only, waiting list, people very upset they couldn't register. The only thing we changed was the title and description. So when you're selling an event, when you're selling a talk, be very, be aware that you're selling your title and description and it has to make the event organizer or the host go, ooh, that's what our people need. I get it and I want it. The next thing you're gonna, you're gonna be asked is we need a bio, send us a bio. So that, again, is a marketing, it's an advertisement for why people should show up at your talk. They're going to ask for a headshot, and they won't ask for a media kit, but when you send it, they're going to love you. The media kit is the Q&A, the um, how to promote this, and just make it so easy, so organized. They're like, wow, this is like an event done for me in a box. The more you can make the event organizer's life easier, the more they love you. And that's what we're going for here. Promise to deliver and exceed their expectations um, and understand the event's goals. Understand the personal and professional goals of the individual, the organizer, better than any other speaker. This is what really gets you booked. Great title, great description, and a real genuine relationship with the organizer so that you genuinely understand what their challenges are and what their purpose of this event is because it's not about you, it's about their event and it's about their audience and so you got to put your ego on the back seat and do a little bit of legwork and that's what really gets you booked anything to ask add or mention here angela no but i want to go to that networking for people who would rather stick hot, hot pokers in their eye than network i love the four like that's a three-letter word that's such a huge like that answers everything to me. I, what I teach is how to get your book written, but I always say I teach it for life coaches. Um, yeah, that, that puts your book, that puts your program in a totally different category. That people yeah, and like the thing is, I, it would work for anybody what I teach, but just by being super specific, they know whether or not to raise their hand. And I specifically say for life coaches who want to make a bigger difference. So. Um, yeah. So I love that, just thinking of that three-letter word for, it's awesome. Yeah, it's good. It's a good one. Oh, and by the way, networking for accountants, networking for lawyers, networking for tradespeople, how much of my talk am I going to change? Yeah, it's like 10 per, it's 10, less than 10%. Very little bit. I might start with a story that makes them go, oh, I like this story because this, I'm the main character in this story. <laughs> really, he understands my challenges, right? But then we're going to have all the same principles. 
So what is the new way? What is the way that everybody in the 350,000 and up group is doing? What is this speaking that gets clients, a speech that gets clients? Now it still has to be entertaining and informative. It still needs to be interesting, but there's a formula. There's a step-by-step -step way that takes people on a journey with you in a talk that makes them go, clearly this person can help me. I need to work with this person. And that is the story of the journey between Pain Island and Pleasure Island. You see, once you were on an island called Pain Island, it was horrible. There was nothing fun to do there. It was just a lot of suffering. And you felt trapped there. And you took the long road of struggle to get to Pleasure Island. And now, you found that there's a boat. Maybe you even built the boat. And the boat gets people, shuttles people from Pain Island to Pleasure Island. And so what people need to know is that you've been to Pain Island, which is where they're at right now. You've been to Pleasure Island, you've seen it, you got the t-shirt, you know how to get back, and you have a great boat. Now where people mess this up is they wanna talk about the boat the whole time. They wanna say there's a bunch of seats in the boat and it's a fast boat and it gets you there in six weeks. And so they say things like, uh, we're gonna do six phone calls and it's gonna last 12 weeks and we're gonna spend an hour per phone call. None of that stuff matters. All I know is, all I wanna know is, am I getting to Pleasure Island, can you get me there? And is this really gonna work for me? And so all those questions are answered in your talk in a way that's entertaining and engaging and story-based, where you're telling the tale of Pleasure Island. They wanna to get to Pleasure Island, you can get there faster and easier than they can do it alone. So that is the sort of the framework of a talk that gets clients. So I'm gonna walk you through how to tell those stories in just a minute. But first, think about this. What's the one thing your audience cares most about? They care about themselves. So the main character in your talk needs to be not you, but them, the audience. In fact, Abraham Lincoln said, spend two thirds of your time preparing your speech, asking yourself, what do they wanna hear? And spend one third of your time preparing your speech, thinking about what you wanna say. So I'll give you some actual uh, questions that you can identify what the audience is really looking for and how you can work through those questions with an event organizer. So what kind of stories will your audience be most interested in? They'll be interested in stories about them. They'll be interested in stories about your clients, people that you shuttled from Pain Island over to Pleasure Island, people who sound a whole lot like them, and they wanna know how you got the results. How did you get those results for yourself and how did you get those results for other people? How did you get to Pleasure Island? So why do we use stories? Scientifically speaking, we actually synchronize the brain waves between you and me when I'm telling a story and you picture what I'm saying. Like if I say, imagine you're at your grocery store. You're walking through your front door of the grocery store and it opens up and you're in the produce section. You see there's a big pile of lemons, bright yellow juicy lemons, and you go right up to the, one of those lemons and you decide you're gonna bite right into it, peel and all, and that lemon juice squeezes into your mouth. When you follow along with the story, you see everything. You see the colors, you see yourself doing it. You can even feel the saliva in your mouth having a physical effect when you imagine biting into a lemon. That's what's happening when you're synchronizing your brain waves. So stories are super engaging. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, someone who has influenced me through his books, Seth Godin. And uh, something that really stuck with me about Seth is he's always talking about these dang stories. He's talking about, he says, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories that you tell. Because a lot of other people are doing what you're doing. A lot of other people are doing what you're doing, but nobody's doing it in the way that has your story, your perspective, your philosophy and that's the story that you tell about your product or service or program or company that otherwise people don't notice you because you're just another one of those providers of that solution but when you tell a story it becomes memorable it becomes engaging they become part of your story and they want to become part of the future of your story which is the beautiful image you have of the world with this problem solved and they say i want to be part of your world i want to be part of that world so we tell the story Seth Godin says, no one buys the features, they buy a story. And people do not buy goods and services, they buy react, relations, stories, and magic. 
So here's a story framework created by a company called Building a Story Brand, and it's based on the hero's journey, and it's broken out very simply here. You will need to have this story clear on what's your story, because your story answers the question, why should I pay attention to you? I've already shared with you my story, my origin, my humble beginnings with the two bags of tea. So follow along real quick. I'm going to move my mouse over the, the screen here. You see the story starts with a character. That could be you or it could be your audience member. There's two heroes in a speech that gets clients. One is you, your story, and one is your audience member. They're a character that has a problem. They meet a challenge. They don't know how to solve that challenge. You don't know how to solve, you didn't know how to solve that challenge. Then you met a guide who understands their fear and gives them a plan. So you may have reached out to a coach when you were stuck. You may have reached out to a friend or a wise elder. You may have found a book or a website that gave you the solution. There was some point in time where you go, oh, this is how I solved the problem. It might have even been a voice in your head that said, Majin, why don't you do it this way? Your voice probably didn't say Majid. That's what my voice says to me. So you have this plan. The plan spurs you into action. You slay the dragon. You solve the problem. And you are the hero to tell the tale, to come back to the humble beginnings, to the common people, and say, this is how you slay the dragon in six easy steps. Or your story, your story might end in tragedy, which would be a cautionary tale. This horrible, terrible, bad thing happened to me, and I know how to prevent it from happening to you. So we use frameworks, proven frameworks that have existed since Greek storytelling thousands of years ago. These same frameworks of the journey of the hero who has a problem, needs a solution, used the solution, and now knows how to solve the problem for other people. So your audience member is sitting there and they're going, hey, I had the similar, I'm having the challenge that you had before. And you seem to be the wise guide with the solution. I would like that solution from you. So the audience member is the hero in their story, and you're the wise person who gives them the solution, the silver dagger, the magic potion, the solution to their problem. And you had a story that sounds a lot like theirs. Humble beginnings, struggle with the problem, had to figure out a way to solve that problem. Ended up solving it, changed your life, it's fantastic. Now you've been to Pleasure Island. So we gotta work on your story. That story is so critical for people to feel that connection and resonance. If you ever wonder why is it that some speakers just feel like the audience just connects with them? The audience is sitting on the edge of their seat. It's not because they have the best information. They, they literally have the same information as the other speakers. But what's more engaging about them is they tell their story in a way that I, sitting in the audience, go, oh my gosh, your story's like mine. You know my pain. You've been to Pain, pain Island and you found a way off. So you got to tell this story. So I hope that's helpful. Now I'm going to give you the story that gets clients magnetized to working with you. This is the success story framework. So we start with when did the relationship start? So a specific time and date, ideally. Who is the client who came to you with a problem? What was their problem? And you might try to use dialogue and use their words. It's a good storytelling technique to actually bring us into the moment of the story by using dialogue. The solution that was provided, the results that they got from that solution, and what they said in their words to you after they solved the problem, and then you close with this phrase, so that's what we do, we help this kind of customer get this kind of benefit without this kind of pain. So I'll tell you the Angela Loria story. Nope, that's the Erica story. I'm gonna skip ahead to, the, to Angela Loria story, just like this, okay, boom, there she is. I grabbed an old case study picture off the internet. It said, Angela Loria case study, it said, perfect. So I gave this two minute talk in Los Angeles, January, 2016. And apparently I got the attention of one audience member, Angela Loria. And while we didn't connect at that event, when I reached out when I was in her hometown in Washington, DC, we ended up getting together and she mentioned, out of all the speakers, yours is the one I remember. And she said, you know, we ended up, we ended up working together. I wrote a book with her, went out to her castle, wrote this three days to done, book and done in three days. And then as we were leaving, as I was leaving, she was saying, you know, Majid, you've shared with me so much about public speaking. Why don't you just do public speaking coaching? 
And I said, no, but that's not what my book's about. And that's not what I do. And you know, it's not really what I want. It's not. And she said, no, really, you could really help a lot of people. So that was the end of that conversation. I flew home, came home. The next night, my phone rings at 930 at night. I'm about to go to bed. I'm an early sleeper. And Angela says, I have an event tomorrow. I can't sleep. In fact, every time the night before an event, I don't sleep. I stay up all night worrying, re redoing everything, reprinting everything. What am I supposed to do? So I talked her off the ledge. I said, okay, here's what you got to do. Boil some chamomile tea, sip that stuff, and just get in bed, close your eyes. She's like, you're not getting it. It's not, it's not that I need to sleep. It's that I'm freaking out. Help me here. So we walked through, you know, what are the, how do we want to start? What's it going to look like? What are the first activities? And she's like, Majid, basically, I'm just like winging it all day. I'm just trying to be brilliant, and it's stressing me out. So she said, what's it going to take for me to make you a public speaking coach? And so we threw out the number $50,000. Now, how does someone justify $50,000 on a public speaking coach? The answer is when her product becomes that much more better, when her clients get that much better results, it's going to have a seven-figure impact on her business. So we started working together right away. We dug deep into everything she does that is speaking and training. We, we redid the, uh, we just tore it up from top to bottom. Every, all the training, the webinars, everything. Using a framework to incorporate storytelling, to incorporate outcome-based communication, meaning what outcome do I want after the story is told? And the results were phenomenal. The biggest result that Angela said, this is what I'm really paying for you, Majid. It's a good night's sleep before the event. It's a good night's sleep before the event. So here I mean, we are almost a year later, and what would you say to that? Well, yeah, so first of all, I always get a good night's sleep before events now, and sometimes I get a good sleep during events, which is fantastic. Um, definitely 10x return on investment and then some. Like, I think my speeches this year have probably generated over $3 million. So that's 50 grand well spent. Um, but so, like everything you said in that story was totally true. I remember it all the same way, except this part that I think you don't know. Like I was so embarrassed all the time. I just felt like I wasn't very good. I didn't, I mean, I said this to you at the beginning and maybe you don't share it because of confidentiality or whatever, but like, I just fucking thought I sucked. And so I was always afraid I was gonna get caught. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing speaking in front of this audience? Like, yeah. you know, that we're on to you. This is all made up. And it's like, I knew the results I got for my clients. I know I'm smart, but I just felt like I was winging it. And I was always like two seconds from bursting into tears and like running away to Tahiti and so no one would, you know, like I guess she's not speaking. I heard she's on a flight to Tahiti. Cause I was just, I wouldn't say I was afraid of speaking. I was afraid of sucking. Hmm. And to know every single time that I get on stage now, I know it's gonna be awesome cause I have this like incredible bag of trip. Like I'm not winging it. I got advice from one of the, like a person who is rated one of the world's best speakers. Yeah. It's not me saying it. Like you've yeah. had hundreds of clients rate you. And I'm like, I know for sure I'm a great speaker now. And that feels crazy to me. I've always known I was a great writer. I didn't need anyone to, I guess, maybe my English teachers in school. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just can't tell you what a gift that is. So I sleep the night before because I'm not worrying I suck. And then, of course, I'm giving better speeches. Because if you're spending the whole time saying maybe this sucks in the back of your head, it probably doesn't make it better. And even if it doesn't impact your speech, that energy of self-doubt permeates right. everything. Right. And I also, I wanted to sound like a speaker. Like, I even think I said to you, like, I love how you do the Majid like magic. Like, how do I get that? Like, maybe if I have some magical way I say my name. Like, I, I went to another speaker training once where they told me how you introduce yourself. And we yeah. That. yeah. And I'm like, this will do it. But it was just so much more than that to like, know that it's coming from within me. And even if I lose a note card or forget my place, I know what to do for people to have an amazing experience. Yes. And I'm so glad you don't have a cheesy way of introducing yourself because that would be you trying to be me. I am actually cheesy even when I'm off stage and it's off camera. True. It is uh, true. 
So the real goal is to make you more like you. Right. Which is genuine, authentic, and comfortable, and not feeling like I'm supposed to act like someone who knows what they're doing. See, I think that's why it took me a year, well, 10 to 11 months before I really felt like I had it, was because first I had this way that, the way I did it was it was just a wall of facts. Like, no stories, no emotion, I'm just going to load you down with a wall of facts, and then that will change your mind, which is not how humans work. So that's why I felt like I sucked, because a little bit I did. They were good facts, but I wasn't really connecting. So and if the audience was full of people just like you, who learns like you, it would have been perfect. Right. They so totally talk about yeah. the different types of learners and the different types of people. Yeah. And yeah. my audience is like the opposite. Like, I'm all words. They're all visual. Yeah. I'm all like thinking and linear. They're all nonlinear and feeling. Like, yeah. It's like the opposite. So I was doing all the worst stuff. But, um, but so first I had to figure out, I think, with you, what I was doing that wasn't working for my audience. Then I had to practice your way because I didn't know what my way was. And I had to do your way, which was really uncomfortable, until I like found my way. And now what I do is so different from what you do, but I know why I'm doing it. That's the thing. I think all the other programs out there, they teach you what to do and it's like a blueprint. So yeah. here's what to do. Stand this way. Take your power pose. Like do this, do that. Yeah. And then for me, the amazing part of working with you was it was so much more about understanding the psychology behind it, having ways to practice and then finding my own path. And that's why I can sleep the night before. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. My, my pleasure. It's been an honor. It's been a great journey. And this is my favorite email from you. Mm -hmm. So uh, Angela makes an offer, a $30,000 offer at one of her events. And out of 16 eligible buyers at the event, I sold 13 every little 390,000 helps. Now, she didn't hire me for sales training, but when people see the quality of the work goes up, when people get it and they're leaving not confused and overwhelmed, but feeling like they really have gotten great it's great training. Um, it certainly helps. It certainly yeah. And helps. I would say like my speaking now, like on the low end, we talked about like a $60,000 engagement on the high end. I've done 500,000 for a single engagement. So like you can roughly say between 50 and 500,000, but I wouldn't speak for less than 50 grand now. Yeah. Phenomenal. I generally like if I don't do a half million dollars, it's like, you know, I'll do it for the right audience, but then it's really just about sharing and giving. I know I'm going to make between 250 and 500,000. Yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. So that is following the framework that I just shared. So Angela and I met January 2016. I ended up hiring her to write a book. She said, hey, listen, I need help with the speaking stuff and the training stuff. Uh, we worked together, we got it all revamped, and the result was that she's actually feeling really genuine and comfortable. She knows how she does it. So she says to me in her words, you just heard them, uh, or in the email it says every little $390,000 helps. And so then I can close my story with, so that's what I do is I help successful business owners who have a mission and a service to provide be able to deliver that through public speaking and training without having to follow some stupid step-by-step, -step, hold your hand here, and blink your eyes here kind of dumb system. You see how I just followed that last sentence? So that's what we do. We help this kind of customer get this kind of benefit without that kind of pain. Okay. So I'll use this same framework to share with you my story of a good friend, Erica Flintz, also a Difference Press author uh, with the author incubator. So Erica Flint called me in a similar mode of sort of a panic, like, crap, I have a speech to give in a week. And she knew it was a huge opportunity for her business because it was full of potential clients. People that in that audience, if given the right message, they go, oh my gosh, I want to work with Erica. Plus there was a influence opportunity there. So interesting thing happened. We turned a conference mistake into a opportunity. Um, so first of all, she called me up. She said, Majid, I'm freaking out. I got to give a killer speech. What can we do? And she hired me and we said, all right, we got a week. We got basically booked two big blocks of time and just got the speech done. What's the outcome we want? We want her to be positioned as a leader in the organization, a leader in the industry of hypnotists around North America. It's at like the hypnotist convention. 
And we also want to get the attention of the organizers of the hypnotist to bring her back for the speech next year. Remember, one of the great outcomes to measure is, can I turn one speech into three more speeches? So we turned this conference mishap into a great opportunity because her speech got moved to a different room. And the, the, the agenda says it's in one room, but it's actually in another room. So we use that as an opportunity to promote the heck out of the speech. Hey, everybody, don't forget the room change. Okay, and she had a tough time spot, 8 a.m. on a Saturday, and the conference started on the Friday, so we're talking hangover zone, the 8 a.m. first thing in the morning. She packed that room, standing room only, by taking the event organizers and getting them all to distribute a flyer that she produced that says, room change, room change, Erica's speech is in this room. So standing room only, great sign, because that's a good sign of a great title and a great description, because that's what gets people to show up. Title and description. Then she gave this talk that prior to working with me, she said, I got all this information, not really sure how to you know, put it together. We put it to a Bee Gees song, Staying Alive. We put it to a dance move. So she's explaining her framework with this raise up dance move and release, let go. And so we play the Staying Alive and you're putting your arm up and you're putting your down. So it's unforgettable. Afterwards, when she got off the stage, she had the classic speaker crowd around her where you, know, you can't even move, there's tons of people who want to ask questions, and there's a guy he elbows through to get to the front, points at her and says, Erica, you are the future of this organization. And that guy was the president of the conference, the guy who can sign the check to bring her back next year. So she's, she's checking in with me along the way. Right after her speech, she sends me this message. She sends me this um, this message, she says, I killed it, yeah, baby. And then I always ask these three questions. What could have gone better? What went well? And what would you different, do differently if you could do it over? So I wanted to get, you know, get that coaching right in there. Then she says, I wanna share a huge win with you. After the talk, the president of the NGA came over to the group I was talking with, pointed right at me and said, now that is the future of NGH. And then later that day, she won the Visionary Award. This, she says, this is a huge award. I've been trying to get it for years. I know it's because I've been stepping up. You're a big part of that and helping me. Thank you so much. So that's what I do. I help business Wait, owners. this thing happened because you're telling the story and I'm totally crying. I love that story. Like just knowing there are people out there that because they learn these like little techniques that seem so hard and scary to learn and that you learn them and like so many more people are going to be helped by Erica because of this. I just love that. And I love her too, which doesn't hurt, but <laughs> that's I an amazing story. I've never heard. I saw that particular picture you have up right now on Facebook, Yeah, but I never heard that whole story. That's just awesome. Well, I'm glad you like it. It made me cry tears of joy too. I yeah. felt, yeah, yeah. And she has such a great gift that if delivered, if she delivers a speech poorly, people go, that was interesting, thanks. Yeah. And if she just delivers Good job. Speech, yeah. And by the way, you're not helping people when they give you the good jobs. Good job, good job, right? And then, you know, and that's the ego again. Everyone wants the pat on the back and the handshake, great speech. And I was running on great speech for years mm -hmm. until I realized if I just tweak a little bit, I can turn those thank you for the great speech into I need to start working with you now, which allows me to take my service beyond the 30 minutes I have with people into months or years of working with them. Yeah. Awesome. So huge win. And so these are the I just want to give you a heads up too. I know you want to go through the framework again. Um, we're just a little tight on time because I promised people an hour and I know we've got uh, a lot to cover. So just giving you a heads up. I know okay. we really want to give people so much. Okay, check this out. I want to give you the speaking engagement checklist. You can download it for free, www.majeedm.com slash checklist. This is the all the stuff that you might forget, but you won't because you have a checklist now. And it's very impressive for event planners because they go, oh, wow, they thought of everything. So they know they don't need to worry about you. How do you prepare your speech? Talk to the event planner and ask them these questions. What do you want your event to do? For you, what do you want? What does the audience want to hear? What do you want me to say? What do you want them to learn? What do you want them to feel? And what do you want them to do? These are the questions you ask the event planner, and they will tell you at the end of that conversation. Wow, you know our event better than anybody else. Nobody else asks me these questions. This is a great differentiator for you. 
So what's stopping you from getting your message on stages? Is it fear? Is it confusion? Is it worried that I'm not credible enough or that I'm not good enough or that I'm not gift, a gifted speaker? None of that matters. In fact, if you're super polished and you seem like an actor on stage, you disconnect. What people are looking for now is real and raw and the ums and the ahs and the uh is totally cool. Don't worry about your speaking skills. Worry about getting your message onto a stage, getting your message in front of people. So do you want to have a speech that sells, a speech, a speech that gets clients? Do you want to have a speech that you can sell to an event organizer? That's I mean, like you asked, do you want to have a speech that sells? But I feel like my question is, do you want to have an impact like Erica did to get like the president of the group of people you want to influence to come over? Because like, yes, it's awesome that it sells. And if we don't make money speaking and we can't pay our bills, then we don't have time to speak. But it's really like so much of this for me is like, do you want to speak in a way that impacts people, changes their lives? And then making money from speaking is just the obvious byproduct of serving and loving on people and being able to change them. And that's why, like, when I was talking to you before, I'm like, I know we've got an hour and we've already, like, blown our hour or whatever. But, like, I want people to have so much more of this. And I know your Make Money Speaking program that you would not have created without me. I think we have established that today. Um, but like, I know that's already helping so many people and people come through that program and it fills up and sells out and most people don't have the opportunity to get in. But that's like, for me, if somebody's listening and they want to know, like, I have to go deeper. Like, this is great information, but how do I craft these stories? How do I know if it's any good? How do I get to practice like your way of like coming up with the buckle up your seatbelt um, or the staying alive move? Like, I'm not, my brain's not going to come up with that. Like, how can I work with Majid? And I know you have very limited availability and you've got a lot going on and clients like me that are demanding a lot of you. Um, but I, I, if you have, room and time, I feel like we should share with people how you work with people in the make money speaking. And then if there's some spaces, maybe you can open up a couple for people who are watching this. Yes. Well, thanks for asking. And if you're still watching and you want support, then I would love to support you. So I actually have a program for, it's a small group of people to get your speech ready as quickly as possible and get ready, get it marketed. It's almost full now. At the time of this recording, I have two spots left. So that's the program called Make Money Speaking. And I thought to myself, how can I get results like I got for Angela without necessarily having to charge what I charge? Spending, spending as much time as we did. Um, and so really breaking that down into a- That was the crazy stalker fee. I did possibly text you every 37 seconds for 10 months, so. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> no crazy stalkers. If you're a crazy stalker, turn off the video. Okay. Get some help. Okay. He has small kids. He doesn't have time for that. That's right. So the easy way or the hard way is where people can decide they can do this themselves, which you could. You could try to figure it out yourself, and that's sort of the long struggle way. That's the way that I took to Pleasure Island. And the easy way is you have a guide that has a boat and a step-by-step -step system that can get you there fast, quick, and painless. So the easy way in this sense is my Make Money Speaking program, where what we do is we wanna create your signature talk as quickly as possible. So it's basically following a step-by-step, -step, fill in the blank, paint by numbers. Your talk is very simple to just lay out. We designed the story, we designed the opener, we designed what we call the irresistible offer. So this could be done in as little as four hours if you wanna just get right into it. Um, but we'll take at least four weeks to make sure that you got it right, you can practice it, and I'll give you some feedback as well. Um, so your signature talk answers the question, who's this person? What's their origin story? What is your why? And it has client success stories in it. Now you might be thinking, but I don't have clients yet, or I don't have phenomenal case studies like you do. You can actually use other people's client success stories just to demonstrate in story form. Here's a story of a person who had the problem and they got to this solution, they follow these steps, and I can help you with those steps. So we can give you client success stories even if you don't have the most amazing client success stories. The best kind are yours, 
Right. But like, I think at one point I told a story, I think a lot of people use this one, but like of Jack Canfield getting 326 rejection letters before he self-published Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, so like, it's not like we're going to make up, or you, I'm not doing anything, <laughs> uh, but it's not like you're just going to make up a, a lie, but you're going to tell a powerful story that's already out there in a way that demonstrates your point. Exactly. Exactly. Tell a story that demonstrates the point. That's what we're, that's what we're looking for. That's got to go in your signature talk because that's what people remember is the stories. Then your irresistible offer is the ideal solution to your client. So your client has this horrible problem that's keeping them up at night. They're on pleasure. They're on pain island. The irresistible offer is the fast boat to pleasure island. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I need. So we weave that through the talk. So that throughout the time, they get more and more excited about hiring you. So but that by the end, they're basically begging you, to let me know, can I help you? Can, can we work together? That's this client attraction, client acquisition talk. So when people join this program, it's for a small group and they get 24 seven Facebook group support, meaning that anytime they have a question, anytime they're stuck on something, anytime they can't figure something out, they pop the question in the group. We keep the group very small and very responsive in this group. As well, we do a weekly Zoom call, a weekly group call. So we do live Q&A, we do Facebook, and all with the outcome and accountability of let's get this talk done and let's get your marketing plan on how you're gonna get that talk on stages and how you're gonna use that talk to get clients. All that's gonna get done in the shortest period possible, somewhere between four and six weeks. Uh, and you can even do it faster once you get access to the program, you can kind of self-study, go through, and if you're a super keen student, you'll get it done faster than that. As a bonus, we're throwing in the stage getting campaign. The stage getting campaign is exactly the steps, emails, phone calls, and scripts. You need to go from, I have no idea where I'm going to speak, to predictably knowing that the next six months I'm going to have two paid speaking engagements or two speaking engagements that get clients every single month like clockwork when you have a campaign set up that you're executing. So we're going to set that up for you as well. Uh, and I'm going to give you access to my online course called Selling with Heart, How to Sell Your Services Without Selling Your Soul, which walks you through step by step the model I use to close high ticket sales over the phone in one call, as well as the mindset required to receive thousands and thousands of dollars from clients who want your support and how you can really help them get the results. So that is Selling with Heart, helping people make the decision to buy from you. That's an important part of this process because the speech gets people wanting to buy from you. And then if you don't know how to close a new client, it's all for nothing. So you gotta know that. And the best bonus is we get to spend three days together. You fly out to my house in Elmer, Quebec, Canada, right outside of Ottawa, Canada, Canada's capital. And so come out and spend uh, three days with me and we're going to polish your speech. We're going to record your speech so that it's ready for not only your own review, but you can actually just send it to people say, I want to get this talk on your stage and we'll do a 10 minute version of it. That's real easy to share. We're also going to record a couple of short videos, six different short videos that are used to market your speech. So again, targeted at event planners who are watching these short videos going, man, my audience needs that message, right? So you're, you've got your marketing plan polished and ready to go. You've got your speech polished, recorded. You've got your promotional materials, your promotional plan for your speech, all this done. And we give you a moniker, your superhero name. The last group that came through, we had the body hacker. We had the freedom muse. We had the curvy stylist. Because people remember you as the blank guy or the blank lady. Might as well get that figured out. So we can I, I know what mine is. Yours is amazing. I'm the author incubator. The author incubator. And that's my favorite kind. It's the one and only. There's not another one. There, no. you're, not, you're not an author incubator. No. Like when people say, I'm a coach. Oh, you're a commodity. What's your price? We compete on price when we're a commodity. But you're the, and my favorite part is the next two words. Who do you work for? Authors. Authors. What do you do for them? I incubate, incubate them. them. Right? It's like my friend, the CEO coach. Ugh. So the CEO coach. So I wonder what that guy does. I know exactly what he does. It's so good. Yeah. So um, I have one important question. Yes. If I were to come to Quebec, 
would I be able to eat poutine? Because that's really my main goal in life. Find it is a, a rite of passage. You, you cannot leave Quebec without eating poutine. They ask you at the customs before they let you out of the country. They check your- Were you able to enjoy some delicious squeaky cheese curds with gravy on french fries? You got it. You got oh, it. So good. That's yeah, in fact- um, What's that? That's worth the price of admission into your um, fine province, that fine province you have there. Totally. And I can't give away all the secrets of the three-day event, but I can say food is a big part of it, and it's a lot of fun. Nice. Um, so what we want to get on this three-day event is we want to make sure that you're prepared to answer the question, what do you charge? And the answer is not giving a number. Um, we want to make sure that you've identified in your speech the phrase that pays. The phrase that pays is the thing that people say over and over about your speech. How you're going to market your talk. We're going to polish and film your signature talk. We're going to have your marketing plan, your stage getting campaign, polished, reviewed, and ready to go. And you're ready to get out there. So here's how you get in. You have to apply and have an interview with me. What we're going to do in that interview is I'm going to ask you questions about your business. Where are you at? What are you selling? What are you doing? I'm going to ask you questions about how is speaking going to impact your business. Tell me about your message. So I want to see, is this something that I think you can really market and really run with? And if it isn't, I might help you tweak it or I might tell you I can't help you or I might point you in some other direction. If I do think that this program is going to be a fit for you and it's going to help you, then I'll invite you to join the program. So go ahead and go to majeedm.com slash apply if you want to join the Make Money Speaking program, and we'll have a conversation about that, and I will help you grow your business with speaking. And if that's not a fit for you, if that's not something you wanna do now, I hope this training has been useful for you. Yeah, I love this because I think there's a ton of value um, for people who aren't ready to take action if they just wanna be thinking about it. And for people who are like me, and they are either on stages, and they're afraid they're doing it wrong, which sometimes happens is like you end up getting opportunities and then you're in a position where you're just afraid you're not doing a good job. Or if you're in a position where you want to be making money speaking in the next, I don't know, two to four months, as opposed to, well, I'd like to make money speaking two or three years from now, someday in the future. Like I think for those people watch this again, like, really take the time to absorb the information here. But for people who are like, now is the time for me to make money speaking. Now is the time for me to know what the pros know because I got to be in front of these audiences and they deserve for me to be able to connect with them. Those are the people who I would say, go ahead, apply to work with Majid. You will probably not talk to him at 930 at night like I did. Um, but, um, but I think you will find even that conversation of figuring out, do I just need to know my area of expertise better? Do I need some speaking training or like, am I ready for this program? Getting clarity on that. Like what you and I had to do was like create and invent a program. But now we took like the best nuggets, the things that made the biggest difference and kind of took that in a system you've now given a bunch of test drives and we know like these are the things that people need to know and they don't need to pay $50,000 to get it. That's right. So. That's right. And you will get a speaking gig during our program. That's one of the modules. You got to do got it. it. Um, and even if that's a speaking gig at the Denny's with 12 people who. That old folks with. home up the road from you might be uh, looking for speakers. Bring your tea bags. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get you. We're going to get you doing something sooner than later. That's the plan. Well, I know we took up a little more than an hour, but I hope people feel like it was so worth it. I know every time that I spend time with you, I learn even more. I don't think you know just how much you know and how rare like your talent, your experience, but also more importantly, your heart is because you care so much about people. And I told you from... The day that I met you, I decided we would be friends forever. And I do not renege on that. I believe in it 100%. I've been your client. You've been my client. But really, I think, like, ultimately, at the end of the day, the thing you and I share, it's like we care about people making the difference they know they were born to make. So I'm so excited you're doing this work. I do think it's the work you were born to do. I really, really do. 
And I love you. And I'm excited that you were willing to take this time today to share this message. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate it. And for those of you who stick to the, to the end of the recording, thank you for staying with us as well. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.